There's a certain sense of cautious optimism in Ethiopia these days. After more than two years of bloodshed, the war in Tigray has stopped, at least for now. Things have been calm since November, when Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's government and the Tigray's People's Liberation Front, or TPLF rebel groups, struck a truce after talks in South Africa. The truce has largely held, and hopes are high for a more permanent solution. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy of the peace deal. Because having access again to those basic services has given everyone hope. It's very emotional. It was a very emotional moment when you get to speak your beloved ones, your children. Around half a million lives have been lost since the fighting began in October 2020. I was in Magala in Tigray at that time. Life was difficult. I'm a father of three kids, no any source of income. I couldn't support them because as a father who is responsible for his family, this was difficult to bear. Add to that the incalculable economic devastation and you get a sense of the enormity of the crisis. But in a way, this was a war that began long before the first shot was fired. It started in 2018 when Abiy became Prime Minister after a nearly 30-year rule of a coalition led by the TPLF. A year after taking power, he unveiled his prosperity party to replace his predecessor, the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front. <laughs> The TPLF was a dominant force in the EPRDF and stood to lose the most. It refused to be a part of Abiy's new political entity and retreated to its power base in Tigray. What followed was incessant divisive rhetoric and propaganda from both sides sprinkled with threats and displays of military might. As is often the case, both sides blame each other for the violence. The government says a TPLF attack on a military base sparked the war, while the rebels see the entire conflict as an invasion by Abiy's government and its ally, Eritrea. So although last November's truce has been welcomed by all, doubts remain over how the points of the agreement will be implemented. Given all this uncertainty, the burning question is, what exactly brought the TPLF and the government to the negotiating table? Now, when it comes to the factors that led to the consensus uh, that was reached between the TPLF and the Ethiopian federal government, I think the two actors, which have been fighting for about two years, have already lost the energy. So there was an exhaustion of energy and resource that feeds the war. Um, and we know that because of the war, significant economic crises uh, was set in motion in Ethiopia. Life became significantly difficult, partly because significant amount of the country's annual budget was redirected to feed the war. So essentially, that had, uh, and in fact, it remains to be, even at this particular point in time, a serious cause of concern for the country as well. Despite the progress towards peace in Tigray, analysts warn of an underlying threat of conflict in other regions of Ethiopia especially unless the issue of federalism is addressed and the autonomy of ethnic groups assured as enshrined in the constitution. Transitional justice is very foundational for this fragile uh, agreement between the TPLF and the federal government. I mean, transitional justice, I, it, but by transitional justice, I mean for the crimes committed, for the lives lost, for the destruction of resources, some responsibility is needed. That's the expectation by the Ethiopian citizens in general, academics and different political uh, actors in, in, in Ethiopia's public field. For now, as peace holds in the north and other parts of the country, Ethiopians are visibly elated, but also equally on edge about what challenges lie ahead. Yeah.